My performances were uniformly better than everyone's in the country, like, and not by a little bit, by like pretty substantial margins. We actually played at pound four in first round losers bracket. This is gonna be the biggest John of all time, but I didn't actually want to win that set, so I didn't really put everything into it. He told me that he was like extremely disappointed with me for the fact that I didn't try. And I just told him I'd rather see him go further in the tournament, which is probably the most Canadian thing you could possibly do when you're fighting someone you're really close to, but he was not happy with it. Leading up to ROM 3, when I found out there was a slight possibility that I might get to play Kevin again, I decided I actually wanted to impress him and give him an actual set. So I put a lot of effort into preparation. I money matched a lot of Falcos, I reviewed my mods, looked at all the awful, god-awful mistakes I made from that set. And then game one starts and I kill myself three times and I'm like, wow, I'm awful. I am the worst player in North America. Game two rolls around and I start winning that game because I read his defense patterns and I'm like, oh yeah, no, I do know about this stuff. Like all that note taking and research, it was actually worth something. I'm not the worst player in North America. Sick. <laughs> Progress. <laughs> the rest you say is history. <laughs> I actually felt really weird. Like, uh-oh, what did I just do? <laughs> I know the Falco mashup and BB doesn't know the Sheik mashup, that's all it was, I'm not this good. Like, I wanted to impress him, but I was like, I didn't want to impress him that much. <laughs> um, it, was, it, was, it was a strange sensation. There was like hundreds of Canadians at Big House. I didn't feel a single one that believed that I could do it. Like, not even my friends, like my best friends at home, right? They told me, like, you're, you're gonna get destroyed, like, for sure. But then I, like, you know, like, I just, uh, it was, it's such a strange feeling, actually. It's, uh, if there's nothing riding on you, then it's up to you to prove that you can do it, right? But you wanna leave, like, some sort of mark. Since there was no expectations at that point, I'm like, whatever happens, happens. I, like, I wasn't nervous at all. I think Kage is capable of getting past this. I really do think yeah. he is. It's just, oh my god, how many stocks we can have left when we get through? Punching the ice line burst is just like punching kids left and right, you know? <laughs> it's like it's just two little kids. Like, what, what are they gonna do? People started going like, oh, no, wait a second. <laughs> like, 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 there's actually hope here. Can we taste that man's name to give this kid Boogie? Because he's looking kind of awesome right there. Uh, here we go. We got Winter Fox's own yes. room. He was smiling, but I think he was definitely nervous. Uh, I just abused that mental aspect of the game and just just do what I do best, right? Like just punch all my opponents away. As soon as I started doing like big combos on him, like everyone was going crazy, and then the entire crowd, like I just felt like I can do anything, right? <laughs> Put your entire team like on the map, right? You just beat like NorCal, and that's one of the top teams in the world, obviously. That was quite something for sure. I was just playing really good that day, you know, like set after set, I felt like I was in the zone. I wasn't afraid of challenging stuff. If you show that you're willing to challenge something, that's just a level of respect that they'll give you. I about none. Don't sleep on it. Don't sleep on it. Don't sleep on it. You can improvise in different areas of the game where other people might not even realize there is anything to improvise at. I remember I had a, like a pretty good lead, and then all of a sudden he started doing those sheet combos on me. I couldn't get out. I got a hit here and there, but he countered me. I had like a kind of rhythm to my game, and I just went with the flow of the adrenaline I had in the moment. I guess I just flew with that and it worked out. I remember at the end of the sec, I was up at 1.2 stocks to one, and I actually like SD on the left side. I'm like, dude, I gotta take the stock like right now. If I don't take this, it's going to game five and I'm gonna juice out. Even when they came on stage and they were like 
messing me up. I was, I was still in the zone. I was like, what, what's happening? Of course I was gonna fist bump him, but I got destroyed by the crowd. And then to be honest, after all the pain, I totally forgot, and that's completely my bad. But like, there was no BM in that. I was, I was definitely looking for him after, but it was, like, it was just too overwhelming, you know. <laughs> To be honest, I didn't remember anything about the set after. People were telling me that, you did this, you did that, that was so good. I'm like, I don't remember, dude. Until I went back home after and I watched it like 15, 20 more times, I was like, okay, that was good.